What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope you're having a great, finally, freaking Friday, and um, we have some news. Um, I guess this is good news. Um, the only person, this, this is kind of crazy, we only have one person on an injury designation today. One person. That's it. For the whole team. One person with a, well, actually, it's not even an injury. We thought, we were hoping, we were praying that whatever the illness is, that whatever the illness is, that the Cowboys were done with it. Well, it had been hitting people, hitting us in pairs. Now, it's hit us just one time this time. Leighton Van Der Esch, Leighton Van Der Esch. Leighton Van Der Esch is the only one designated as questionable with the illness that has been going around the Cowboys locker room. That's it. That's the list. Period. And the Cowboys are hoping to have James Washington in the mix um, playing this weekend. The unicorn, finally. And I really hope... I really hope that James Washington plays well because I don't get it. You know, the more I dig deeper into the Odell Beckham situation, I don't understand why the Cowboys are so thirsty for Odell Beckham Jr. I had a rant this morning. I, I kind of went off because, you know, maybe Odell is, maybe he slipped um, or maybe he realizes his body's not ready to get on the field before playoffs but to say you know i don't need to show up for playoffs you know basically i um i've been here i've played games and this that and the other to me it just sounded selfish and that's where i was just like i'm done but you know the more you process everything that's going on here the whole game that's being played and you know we've got the limo driver that's saying that he's going back to new york by all means please go back to new york please go back to new york um, everybody that is so thirsty to try and get him. But I'm trying to understand this because here's the thing. Receiving yards per game, his rookie year, the catch-no-catch catch year, 108.8. That's incredible. That was great. 2015, 96.7. That's great, too. 2016, 85.4. 2017, 75.5. 2018, it did go back up again. 87.7. 2019, 64.7. 2020, 45.6. Last season, 38.4 yards a game. We are going gaga on a guy who has not had more than 65 yards a game since 2018. And when I look at the numbers, when you look at the numbers, his career numbers, he's only averaged 13.9 yards per completion and hasn't been at 14 since 2019 so 2020 13.9 uh 12.12 uh, two with uh, the two teams you know with cleveland he actually averaged more at 13.6 than he did with the rams but look at this we're talking about he had five td passes last year from the rams in the short time that he had but but we're only talking about 537 yards last year now be that they say his knee was bad and at the point of possibly exploding that he ended up doing those 500 and some odd yards with them, right? But here's the thing. He hasn't been lights out even before that. And he's older now. When you come back from injury, do you expect, or what are we expecting to get from Odell? 
what are we, honestly, what are we expecting to get from Odell at this point? You know, he's saying $20 million is what he wants a year. Are we expecting him to go, what, 2018, 87 yards a game? I don't know. You tell me. He hasn't been over 64 yards a game since 2018. Are we going to look down and say all of a sudden he's going to be a difference maker? Because here's what's sad. We had Amari Cooper here who is on pace right now for about 1,200 yards. Has seven TDs. Uh, Why are you acting, acting up here? Has seven TDs on the season. Odell hasn't had seven TDs in forever. He's got 832 yards with garbage quarterback play. Actually, Jacoby Brissett's actually played better than what you would have thought. But here it is. We are thirsting over Odell. And we had Amari Cooper. Now, granted, we were paying $21 million for Amari Cooper. But you don't think that the 832 yards that he had right now on this team wouldn't have helped this team more than what Odell Beckham Jr. is? So we've got, we've got, of course, um, Stephen Jones and Jerry Jones still talking about, you know, okay, we're still in the mix. On 105.3 The Fan, according to John Machado, Odell Beckham, it's part of the process, certainly a lot of unknowns when you're working with a player coming off a major injury. I thought our visit was productive. Still a chance to sign him? Yeah, I wouldn't rule out anything right now. And maybe the Cowboys are just playing this as, you know, we we enjoy the circus atmosphere because that's exactly what you got. But I don't see where you're getting that much of a benefit from Odell. At this point, James Washington, here's what's crazy. James Washington right now could be more effective than what you got from Odell. Now, check this out. James Washington, I know he doesn't have that much experience. He's only been around for four years, but he's averaged 14.3 yards per reception. Now, mind you, 2021 with Pittsburgh, You had Big Ben who was ass. Ass. So I'm not even sure you want to count that year. But in 2020, he averaged, um, he had uh, 30 receptions, 392 yards, 13.1 yards per reception, and five TDs. That's what Odell did last year. The year before that, he had 44 receptions for 16.7 yards per reception. With three TDs. That's more yards per completion than Odell Beckham. His completion percentage is a 52.3. Odell, that's about what Odell has for his career. Now, I'm not saying that James Washington is going to be the be all end all. But at this point, I think James Washington would be a better bet for you than Odell. Because at least he's going to be able to play in the next couple of games going into the playoffs to get used to playing with Dak. And he's been here long enough that he's got the playbook. And see, I'm going to give you this one as an example why I think he'll be more successful. When Dak Prescott went down, And maybe Baker Mayfield throws this out the window because that just didn't make sense last night. But if you're bringing in typically somebody else to come quarterback the team, it takes time for them to get on to the same page, to understand the playbook. They may have better ability, but if they only know five or six plays, then you're kind of limited. Whereas Cooper Rush had been there, been in the system, understood what you're doing, and so on, and could fit into the puzzle. He may not have the ability 
of somebody else that you can try and bring in. Not that there were many people to bring in, but we had heard people say, you know, go to trade for Sam Darnold or sign Cam Newton and, you know, this, that, and the other. But Cooper Rush succeeded because he knew the system. Follow me? Anyway, that's all I got for you guys right now. We've got our live stream in about three hours from now. I got some work to do in the workshop. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Peace.